previous instructional module, Georgia DOE Economics SSEMA 3 Part 1 for the beginning. This is Part 2, Teaching Fiscal Policy and Budgeting, Trade-Offs and Externalities Happen. SSEMA 3, SSEF 2, and SSEF 1. How does our Congress spend the money? The Center on Congress at the University of Indiana has a budget allocation exercise. Students estimate how much each spending category is of our federal budget, and then they get to see how accurate they were. Here are some links to historical analysis of the budget and our debt. The first link is a very powerful tool allowing you to select different presidential administrations by year and compare. You can evaluate total debt, deficit, and debt to GDP. The Fix the Debt website has the logo Fix the Debt to Grow the Economy and it provides solutions and history. It also details the trade-offs that we are making and the likely future consequences of deficit spending. This is also a very easy to understand website. The Conquer Coalition is a bipartisan group started by former Senators Paul Songus and Warren Rudman and Peter Peterson. They produced a movie in 2008 titled IOUSA. It details the four deficits our country is facing and provides solutions the Concord Coalition stresses that both tax increases and spending cuts will be needed. The entire movie is 80 minutes, but I believe it's worthwhile. It is something you could leave with a sub to start and then finish the next class day. Alternatively, there is a 30-minute bite-sized version that provides the key ideas. Both are available on YouTube. Make sure to emphasize what can be done about the situation. Students get upset and somewhat depressed to learn this unit. Emphasize that our elected officials operate based on what will get them elected. If they're not re-elected, they cannot work for the public good anymore. Does the public understand the situation? I ask the students, what would an educated public do? I share these four websites with students and discuss solutions on better ways to budget. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget suggests better ways for Congress to operate. In other words, a better decision-making process. Near the end of this module, I list all budget simulations currently available. Each election cycle, some new ones are released and others retired. Choose one for your class. I sometimes have a class do multiple ones differentiating based on student ability. I set up the directions for the game and brief students. Then I add the key ingredient to make these simulations realistic. While they make their budgeting decisions, students must track their spending cuts or increases, identifying trade-offs, likely future consequences, and externalities of each decision. Without this key step, students tend to think of this as only a game that does not affect millions of people. I have each student play individually, or if computers or phones with available data are in short supply, teams of two. Try to get a lab or computer cart if possible, as some of the balance the budget simulations are less phone screen friendly than others. When the students finish, Debrief the lesson with a discussion of who got closest to balancing the budget and what that entailed in trade-offs, likely future consequences, and externalities. Yes, it is difficult because the trade-offs affect people. These are not easy choices. But this was not realistic. Students did not have to compromise with other policymakers. Instead, they were doing this on their own. I like to play the game one more time, placing students into teams based on their political ideologies to simulate Congress. Now, decisions are made by majority decision of each group. Try to get each group to have an odd number of students. 
Again, each group must keep a list of the spending cuts or increases and the trade-offs, likely future consequences, and externalities. Again, debrief. Now, emphasize why the difficulty increased. Because policymaking in a pluralistic society is inherently conflictual, requiring compromise. Continue debriefing with a discussion of marginal analysis and the impact of budget choices on current and future gross domestic product, unemployment, and inflation. Discuss the choices that students make in terms of the additional, that is, marginal cost to society and marginal benefit to society. Were increases in government spending for investment or for consumption? Most entitlement spending would count as consumption since it is not an investment in either human capital or capital goods. Will society receive additional benefits from the deficit spending that government is conducting, or is the future benefit similar to that of a college student charging a pizza to their credit card? Yes, that is an oversimplification, but we need to analyze government spending in terms of short-run and long-run marginal cost and benefits. How did your spending and taxing decisions do in the budget simulation on these criteria? You might remind students of questions posed in the Keynes versus Hayek rap battle, Fear the Boom and Bust Rap, when Keynes says, in the long run, we're all dead. During the Great Recession, most of the critiques of the stimulus plan were on what we were choosing to spend on rather than the choice of whether or not to spend. In the fight of the century, round two, Hayek asked, who plans for who? Then, I want plans by the many, not by the few. What are the long run and short run impacts on gross domestic product, unemployment, and inflation from your choices in the budget simulation? These are the future impacts of our government's choices. This quote is a great close for your debriefing. It's from Lee Hamilton, the director of the Center on Congress at the University of Indiana. The primary function of government is determining priorities and making choices, and the nub of it is the federal budget. Allocating the federal budget is one of the most difficult and important tasks in government. We live in an incredibly diverse country, and our citizens have widely differing interests and priorities. As a member of Congress, you quickly learn that people can make the case for a hundred different programs, all of them persuasive. And you learn how difficult it is to get 535 members of Congress to reach agreement on the tens of thousands of items in the federal budget. The challenge for Congress has always been to reach agreement on a budget that is in the nation's best overall interests and lets us live our lives peaceably and productively. I hope this exercise has given you a sense of this enormously important role of Congress and how difficult that role is, as well as a better understanding of both the purposes for which the money is spent and the way in which the allocation of the federal budget affects the lives of you and the members of your family every day. For the long version of the Congressional Simulation, which accurately portrays the committee system at work and both houses of Congress, see the last slides of this module after the other resources. I highly recommend inviting your state and or federal legislators to speak to your class. Even if they cannot come, a staff member may speak. I have often combined classes with other teachers inviting government, economics, and current issues classes together. Not only will your students learn, but your local legislator may gain a better understanding of schools too. Be sure to send thank you notes afterwards. Some students may get interested in paging or later interning for the state or federal legislatures. Here are more resources for teaching about federal budgeting, deficit, and debt. Here are more lesson plans on these topics. Here are resources from the 2016 budget. Although these are now out of date, it gives you an idea of what resources are published each year when a new budget is proposed. Here's a list of budget simulations. The second page of the list of budget simulations. For more knowledge of macroeconomics, 
go to the Evening at the Fed programs, as well as the Georgia Council on Economic Education workshops. Local universities may also have programs or guest speakers. These are great ways to increase your knowledge and that of your students. Have fun teaching and educating the future voters. Realize that you may be their last macroeconomics instructor. Depending on their major in college, they may not take macroeconomics. They may not go to college. You matter. Thank you. The long version, the full congressional simulation. This could be done in a current issues class, economics is part of their standards, or after an AP exam or EOC test. First, have students request committee assignments. I suggest assigning them based on interest as they will do a better job. Also, perhaps consider seniority, just as congressional leaders do when making committee assignments. Base your committees on whichever budget simulator you used. You need about two to three students per committee at a minimum, so you may have to combine categories, just as Congress sometimes does, depending on your class size. These were the committees that I used. You will have two of every committee because one will be the House Committee and the other the Senate Committee. If you have a small class, you could join with another teacher of economics or current issues. Your class could be the Senate and there's the House of Representatives, perhaps. Have your House of Representatives committees elect their leadership. The Speaker of the House will chair the House session. Have your Senate committees elect their leadership, the President pro tem. This is usually the oldest senator of the majority party. For our purposes, this student will serve as the Senate chair. Assign seats in your classroom so you can group each house together and each committee together. All members may and should discuss proposals with each other. Your class president may also get involved and suggest policies. If you have very few students, you may wish to assign your class president to become a member of Congress. Committee meetings may take multiple class days, or you could assign this to be done in an online format that you monitor. Each committee must come to agreement on what to cut or increase and identify the three items listed here. This assignment should be turned in to you before proceeding. You will need to display this for the full House or Senate in the next stage of the simulation, so having each proposal in electronic format is preferred, or you could use a document camera or make copies. If you are doing this in class, students will need access to the internet to conduct research. You could go to a computer lab, or if they have available data, use cell phones. This will get noisy. Now, Congress is in session. Each House takes turns being in session. The other House members must be quiet. Leaders chair each session. A member of the House not in session could serve as a secretary, so you have exact records of any changes that take place with amendments. If the House Science Committee proposal ends up differing from the Senate Science Committee proposal, a conference committee will have to meet to resolve the differences. Assign both House and Senate Science Committee members to the Conference Committee. Then the final proposal must be approved by each House. Assemble all proposals together and send to the President. If the President does not sign, you know the drill, two-thirds vote of both Houses is required to override the veto. Have a student enter the final choices into the budget simulator that you used before. How did the full Congress do? How do these results compare to previous results? Debrief as with the short simulation. Debriefing instructions begin at the 516 mark of this module. Tips. Have committees do their work beforehand, perhaps on a Google Doc or other platform. Post committee proposals so all members of Congress may view before each House meets. 